It's old boying time. I'm inside and I saw old boy, the 2003 one. It is directed by Park Chan Wook. And if you haven't seen this movie, I will spoil it for you. This is requested by Patreon. If you like the fast track movie review, you can't do that at patreon.com slash ASC presents. On with the review. This movie starts when we're following all day Sue. He's at the police and he's drunk and he's just there and he's being a nuisance. He's doing a whole bunch of rolling around. He's like, oh, I'm drunk, I'm stumbling around. <laughs> and it gets to the point where he gets in fights with other drunk people to the point where he has to be handcuffed to the bench that he's sitting on. And so we have a good old friend here who is here to pick him up. And the way that this dialogue is delivered, mwah, it is perfect. Immediately, we get to know that Odesu does this a lot, and his friend bails him out a lot. And he's still doing this. Not to mention that he has some wings for his daughter. It's his daughter's birthday. And he's not spending it with his family. So this is incredibly problematic. We get a glimpse at his character immediately at the beginning of the movie. And then his friend goes to a payphone and is having a little chat with his wife and daughter. And Odesu is just there. He's just having a little bit of a chill. And his friend's like, hey, hey, your wife's on. You want to talk to him? And he can nowhere to be found nowhere to be found whatsoever. It's actually insane. How do you get lost so quickly? First of all, I should mention, I watched this movie twice. The first time, I didn't notice this detail at the very beginning of the movie, but the second time, if you notice the guy like with an umbrella, it's got some purple with some purple triangles on it. That's the same type of pattern that shows up later in the movie, right at the very beginning of the movie. And I wouldn't have known this if I had not been watching it twice. I've seen Old Boy twice. And there are new details to uncover every time. Now we see Odesu. He's locked up. He's been kidnapped. I like the way the camera is showing the way he is locked up. Something opens and then we have Odesu, he's trying to put his hand through it. There's a person trying to give him food and he's just there like, well, I'm locked up, you captured me. Why am I captured here? I've been here for months. And then a nice view of his room and he's like throwing his food. I'm like, wow, he's really in captivity. He's incredibly confined. The only type of entertainment he has is a television. And that's the only, access he has to the outside world is this television. What's interesting is that the meal is the same thing over and over and over again. It's dumplings. It's like the specific Chinese restaurant dumplings going on here. And if I was subjected to eat dumplings every day, by the third day, I would be incredibly annoyed and want something new. But for as long as Odesu has been in here for, I feel really bad for him. So of course, he's in captivity. So he's done a few little attempts at uh, doing an undead, several attempts, a lot bloodier sometimes than these other attempts. But then there's this gas that happens every night, same time of night, that passes him out, and then in the morning he's all fixed. He's all good. He's able to survive. It's interesting because there's several attempts where he's like, I'm in captivity, time to end my life, and then after the many, many attempts of him to try to do that and it being unsuccessful, he then just writes stuff down in a journal. He does a little bit of a self-therapy. And I'm like, I like this about him. I like Odesu because he's willing to sit down, well he's not willing, he's forced to sit down and to write out his problems, and I like he actually does write out his problems instead of staying with his problems for the rest of his life. So he's in captivity, he's watching women dancing on the TV because he's so deprived of any human contact or anything pornography or at any kind of any sort. But you don't have to jack off to the TV. Just go to autisticmoves.com. So Odesu is just sitting here. At some point, 
he decides to mark how many years he's been in this place with like a little bit of a tattoo. He does his own like self tattoo. I don't like seeing the needle process of him doing the tattoos, but that's just me. I'm a little bit of a squeamish person. I don't like seeing needles going into anyone's skin, not even my own, I should say. So of course we have Daisu's keeping track of the time and he's buffing up, he's doing, <laughs> he's punching the wall, he's learning how to fight. He develops a bunch of calluses over his knuckles while punching the wall and he loses a bunch of weight. And I'm like, okay, all right, I'm down. So I like seeing how he learned to fight because at the beginning, when he started punching the wall, he wasn't good at it at all. But then he learns, presumably by watching a lot of media, and also just doing it a bunch. And then at the end of his 15 years, or right before the end, he's like tunneling a hole through the wall, he gets a tunnel through the wall, and then he's able to remove a brick and touch some rain. And he's like, oh my goodness, I'm about to make it, I'm about to leave. And then the next day, he gets put into a suitcase in a bunch of grass, and just out in the outside open, just out. And it's interesting because this piece of grass is on the top of a roof. I personally have never encountered that, but I haven't lived in a big enough city or a city with not a bunch of space, but too many people to have seen grass on top of a rooftop before like this. But alas, this is my first exposure. And he is just exposed to the outside world, all the sights, all the sounds, how everything has changed over the past 15 years. And then there's this guy, right? And the very beginning of this movie starts off with a guy being held by a tie off the side of the building. And Odesu is like, let me tell you my story. And that's a great opening. That's a great opening, right? Here we are now. We're at that moment. He sees the guy hanging on the side of the building with a dog, by the way. And he's like, I just want to die. I'm such a monster. I'm the monstrous monster that there is has been monstered. And I'm like, dude, why are you bringing your dog? You are a monster. You're bringing your dog with you to fall off the side of a building. The dog didn't ask for this. You did, and you're like, well, if I can't have this dog, no one can have this dog. So of course, he takes the dog, has the dog, he's holding the dog, he's about to fall off the side, and Odesu saves him. Saves him, he's like, let me tell you my story. You can die later, let me tell you my story. And of course, since us as the audience has already seen his story, it just jumps to after the story has been told. This guy though, he's like, well, let me tell you my story. And it's like, you don't get it, dude. You're not, you are not going to be saved because you're hyper focused on how bad your life is. But you just listen to a guy who has been locked up for 15 years, nothing at all, no outside sources. And here this guy is who wants to lean off the side of a roof. This guy is wearing incredibly expensive, nice clothes. He's in a position of privilege. He doesn't see how much privilege he has. So of course he's not going to be saved. So Odesu is on his mission. He's on his revenge quest to see who captured him. Odesu gets off the building. There's a nice shot of him walking in front of a building that he's just on top of. And then the guy falls onto the car with his dog, mind you. I keep mentioning this because I am still, it's, it's so hard to wrap my head around the fact that he would take his dog with him out of this life plane that everyone exists in. Why would you do this to your dog? But anyway, that's, that's, that's not the point of the movie. Odesu is on the street He's just like, okay, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna walk up to these group of thugs. One of them is smoking a cigarette. I'm gonna take this cigarette out of their mouth. I'm gonna smoke it. And he's gonna kneel down and he's gonna enjoy it. And then some guy like kicks him. He's like, all right, bet. Let me show you my fighting skills. And he wins this fight because and this is incredibly realistic. Everyone just swings at him and all he has to do is wait for the attack to go through, and then within the space of them pulling back their hand and then attacking again, 
You can get him, and that's what he does, and that's how he wins this fight. And like, I like that. And he's on the search for his daughter. What a terrible, terrible father. He's on the search. He goes into the sushi restaurant. He's like, oh, thank goodness. There's stuff that's alive here. There's real food here. He goes to the sushi chef. The reason why he goes to the sushi chef is because it was, see, this particular sushi chef has a TV show that he would watch in captivity, so he knows everything about the TV show, and he goes to the sushi chef, and there's this chick there, her name is Milo, she's here to have some sushi technical skills, do all the sushi things, I don't know anything about sushi, she's like, alright, what do you want? He's like, give me something alive, she's like, alright, here you go, here's a, here's a squid or octopus. I don't know the difference. This is pretty small. I don't know what type of octopus, what type of squid there are. It's a thing with tentacles, okay? It's a living fish with tentacles. Wow, this guy is dedicated. He just eats it. Eats it, and the tentacles are still moving. And you can see, like, the tentacle going around his, like, airway to try to, like, stop him from eating them. But, like, isn't the brain already chewed through like how is the tentacle still going how is this possible and then he just passes out and i'm like yeah that was probably uh not good to ingest first thing out of captivity is an entirely live raw thing from the ocean as somebody who lived in seattle for many years had some many sushis and then the first exposure to a raw sushi that i had i ate like eight of those little sushi things and then had to throw up because it was too much for my stomach and that's somebody who had been eating fish on the regular an introduction to a raw fish is going to upset your stomach so of course I'm actually surprised that this guy didn't throw up everywhere. He passes out. And I'm like, okay, this is interesting. And then he wakes up in a chick's apartment. More importantly, it is Mito's apartment. And he's like, oh, this is, huh, weird. I'm at a chick's place. And like, she's just using the bathroom, right? And he runs in with a knife and he's just like, oh, I'm gonna touch your titty. She's like, no, stop it. Wait, not right now. Maybe later. Not right now, though. And like, you're giving him the option to? I mean, you must feel really bad for him. But also, this guy seems like he's seen a lot. And so now we have Nito, and now we have Odesu, and they're just having a little bit of a chill together. And Nito has read all of the journals, all of the pages, which is pretty much just a journal's worth. It's a bunch of pages of his backstory. And as soon as she mentions it, he's like all protective. I'm like, wait, why are you protective? She already read it. Just engage with her on some things. She already read it. Oh my goodness. He kind of gives up on finding his daughter right after he was given the news that she was adopted. And he's like, all right, well, I'm not gonna find out who my daughter is. Let's see who is giving me them dumplings which restaurant it is it and i like some details were added within the captivity who is given like a piece of a restaurant thing within one of his dumplings which is bad food safety practice if this restaurant demonstrated proper food safety practices oh boy would not happen actually or at least the second half wouldn't probably the first half he would have no idea where to even look for this dumpling restaurant, but he has the words like blue dragon on it. And he's looking for every place that has blue dragon. He's looking everywhere. He's looking all over the place. He's like, this is not the dumpling. This is not it. This is not it. So they find this Chinese restaurant, terrible name, purple blue dragon. So they follow this delivery driver and he goes to the floor and then, you know, the drivers, just whatever he's just chilling he's not he doesn't care about the guy in the elevator with him he goes to the right floor and there's like a bunch of dudes right there's a guy who's sitting in a chair he has like an axe and i like the diagram because i've seen this scene a lot out of context i didn't know what the context was he has a dashed line about to hit that guy's head and it's like there's a little bit of a tension build up and it's like, ooh, this is beautiful. Okay, this is something's about to happen. And he does a little <laughs> and I like it because there is him on one side 
And while he's doing this hallway scene, there's like a bunch of guys on the other side. And then at some point, both sides surround him and then get at him and then he's able to push him off and then get to the other side. And then he's like beats him up, beats up everyone. There's an elevator full of people here. And he's like, all right, you also want to get the same treatment too? <laughs> and he goes up to this freaking hotel. By the way, it's a private prison, not a hotel. Private prison. I didn't know it was a thing, but it is. And this guy, Odesu, goes up to the top. He encounters the guy looking at the freaking cameras. And his thing is, oh, I'm just going to pull out your teeth for information. And it's like, but this guy is being paid. Somebody is obviously doing something bigger. And this guy is going to speak or not speak. And you're going to pull out his teeth as a result. Oh, pull out all of my ears. I'm going to pull out all of your teeth. And it's like, dude, fucking. Mm, why would you? Why would you do this to somebody who's just not even the guy who locked you up? And it's like, why was I locked up? Uh, because you talk too much. And it's like, we gotta figure out some information about this guy. Turns out this guy, Evergreen? What is Evergreen? Evergreen keeps appearing. He looks up Evergreen on the internet. He, he contacts his long lost friend who's still wearing the same shirt, who's still in the same den as from 15 years ago. And he's just chilling there. While he's looking up from information, he's like, who is Evergreen? What is happening? What's, that's weird. Okay, we're gonna look up some information. boo doo boo doo boo doo boo And while this is happening, we have Odesu and Mido are having a little bit of a, uh, a kissu kissu, And eventually they have a little bit of a sexu sexu. And what's interesting about this is like, okay, I like how this is shot. This is nice and intimate and it's all built up. I like it, it's all nice and built up. Who is Evergreen? Who owns Evergreen? Why Why Evergreen? At this point in the movie, the person who captured him reveals his identity. Wu Jin. He's like, hey, if you don't find out where I'm at, I'll murder Mido. If you find me, then I'll murder myself. Fun game. So he's like, all right, I gotta find this guy. I gotta find this guy. I gotta find all this information. And his guy, I'm gonna call him the guy behind the table, his long lost friend, the guy behind the computer, that trope. He's like, I have some information. He's just dead, <laughs> gone. But they do eventually find the building. All right, here's something really fun. I like this build up. We get a little bit more and more information about Wu Jin as this movie continues on. His sister died at a school at which that Ode Su left a while ago, and then, you know, he didn't care. He did not care at all. Here's a little bit of how old Daisu was when he was a youngin'. So he's like, hanging from trees, and smoking cigarettes, he doesn't care at all. He's like, oh yeah, I don't care. He sees Wu Jin, he's just running, he just goes to follow him, he follows Wu Jin. And he sees him with a chick, and it's like, huh, interesting. I'm gonna tell this guy that Wu Jin was with some chick and describes her with a bike and then that guy is like I'm gonna go with her. And then that rumor while Odesu has left that rumor just spreads that she is like a whore and what's interesting is that that chick was Wu Jin's sister and she was false positive on a pregnancy test so she was like okay I'm ashamed. I'm going to fall off the dam now. <sighs> Wu Jin was there holding her hand while she was falling. And he's like, I love you. And she's like, I know, but this baby, we can't have it. We can't have it come into the world or it might become malformed. It might be a, not a good baby. It's an incest baby. And then she just insists on him letting her go. She does the letting of the go. And it's like, oh my goodness. And then she just falls. And it's sad. It's so sad. I feel really bad for Wu Jin. And he had to live this world of wealth without his sister. I honestly think that probably this happening, and he know who did it, it was Odesu. Odesu started the rumor that uh, she was uh, sleeping with people and he saw them have an incest. I'm sorry. I'm sorry you went through this illusion. Odesu really should have kept his mouth shut, but he did it and he caused a death of a woman as a result. And so we have Odesu and he goes up to Wujin's office. He's like, I'm gonna fight you. 
I'm gonna fight you. Why did you capture me? And here's the big reveal. Spoiler. Obviously, I said at the beginning of the movie, but this is the biggest spoiler of them all. He goes and he's like talking about his daughter, right? He's like, hey, your daughter is adopted. He's like, yeah. And he shows some pictures of him when he was uh, when she was growing up. It's interesting. We have like a parallel shot of Mido. She's been given a box and she opens the box and it swings and then she puts them on and she's like, hoo hoo, I'm, I'm flying. Hoo hoo. While this happens, we get a reveal of her at what she looked like when she was older and older and older and then eventually what she looks like now. And this is the reveal. Old Day Sue was having sexual relations with his daughter and he was forced into it. I mean, <laughs> He didn't know his daughter until now, and now he's like angry. He's like, ah! He just goes after uh, Wu Jin. He's like, ah! And they have a little bit of a fight with the the, the security officers, but he's like able to win. He's like, ah! I'm gonna get you! I'm gonna get you! Ah! He's like, now, now, you can't kill me because I can just kill myself. Look at this button. Here you go, right? And he holds that up, and there's a few stages of uh, I'd say grief that happen. Oh, they sue first. He's in denial. Then he's just enraged. Then he's uh, he's bargaining. He's bargaining. He's like, I'll be your I'll be your dog. I'll be your dog. Woof 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 woof. And he starts like licking his shoe and everything. And he's just Wujin's over here, just laughing. He's like, ha ha ha! I caused this all to happen. And then, <laughs> what is it? The next step? Anger. He's really angry. He starts like going at him. He's like. Like ah, 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 ah. what's interesting is that Wu Jin's like I'm gonna I'm gonna leave I'm going into the elevator, and then he's like oh by the way the device I said that would stop the pacemaker in my heart because that's what I got going on I got a pacemaker yeah here's the kill me button here you go and then he rolls the button to Odesu and Odesu presses it and instead of it killing Wu Jin it is actually the sounds of him and his daughter having sex. Ooh boy, I like the dark twist, and then Wu Jin just has a little bit of a pow, you know, in the in the elevator. And of course, Odesu's like, well, I just want to be hypnotized to forget my daughter. He goes to the hypnotist and he's like, hey, could you please make me forget that Mita over here is my daughter? And it's nice and successful, he even like cuts out his tongue about it. I will never speak a word, never again. I'll even cut out my tongue for it. And it's pretty hardcore how the length he goes to make sure he doesn't say anything unnecessary again. He forgets that Mito is his daughter and a nice shot of them in the forest. Mito is there, he's there, and he's like, oh, nice, we can have a little bit of a chill embrace. And then, the movie ends on a beautiful shot of the mountains going in a nice 360 pan and it's so beautiful. I love the gradient in the sky. Oh my goodness, everything about this movie, there's so many details. I've seen this twice, I want to see it again. It's so much different the first time watching it than it is the second time watching it because like I already know the twist the second time watching it. Now I'm just looking for extra added details and there are so many from the beginning but if you know the end, it's like, oh, okay, I can see, I can see this happening, actually. I can see this coming. Overall, I think this is a great movie. The editing is superb. The, the plot is superb. The way that the actions and the events are laid out throughout the timeline of the movie, I think is just well done. It is so well done. Mwah! Watching this movie after it, I was so giddy. I was like, oh my goodness! It's the equivalent of having seen Psycho or Doctor Strange Love for me. Like the feeling that I get after watching this movie, I felt that same feeling. So I have to give this movie, it is a solid 10 out of 10. If you like this review, watch another one. The platform really likes that. If you want a fast track movie review, you can do that for $20 readinos at patreon.com slash ASC presents. And if you like to help support the daily grindiness of all them daily movie reviews, go to this link tree. Find the way you can help support the daily grind of all them daily movie reviews. So you can go here. And until next time, I'm in South Saw. See you later, my South Croutons Bacon Bits.